Hey, what's up, y'all? All right, so we are going to continue on with this little trend that I've been doing with the experimenting and getting away from my normal tendencies for cooks and stuff like that. Um, doing it on brisket today. Yeah, I remember the very first brisket that I had when I was old enough to actually spend my money on something. I was a youngster, and uh, I, you know, we had the square grill that you throw charcoal in for the 4th of July and load it up with large fluid and scorched, you know, whatever's in there. So it was that. And, uh, you know, that little thing would cook out some amazing, some of the best wings and homemade hamburgers that you ever had. But we knew nothing of brisket. I put this thing on like you would a steak <laughs> or a burger. And I tried to cook it that way. Talk about a waste of money and shoe leather. Yikes. Anyway, uh, I remember my very first uh, no wrap brisket in the smoker after I realized what that piece of meat was in the charbro and that was one of the best uh, the offset charbro baby girl that was one of the best briskets that I've ever made and it was by pure luck uh, so uh, that's what made me want to continue on uh, during you know with this process and uh, I will admit that uh, I do miss that initial <gasps> moment but you know this one it was pretty fun and uh you know we're going to continue to experiment so i hope y'all you know enjoy the process and bear with me and you know take trips back down memory lane you know through the learning process and you know just kind of open up some things so uh that's what this one is um we have some nice proteins uh, coming up next uh this brisket cook was maybe a couple weeks ago uh tomorrow I will be doing something I think on the Vision Kamado and um, that should come out here within the next week or two on this video uh, have two other really interesting proteins well it'll be three including what I'm doing tomorrow uh, really interesting proteins uh, that are unusual for this channel and that yeah, I don't really normally see people doing because they're unusual so that said y'all stick around hope you enjoy it course you know i ramble but connecting <laughs> all right y'all see here, here's the bit all right so here's the prep work for the uh, 14 pound angus brisket no wrap low and slow I'm talking about 215 so i'm assuming hoping that i will get about 15 or so hours with this amount of fuel. We'll see. I know it'll last all night, so that's what that's what I'm banking on. I'll probably throw this on around nine or ten, and see where we go. All right. All right. So we're gonna try to get. Oh, here we go. Try to get about 14 to 17 hours out of this setup. See how it does. Fire bar is ready. I don't need that pan or that foil because I'm going to run with the hotel pans for both the brisket and the ribs since I'm not wrapping anything. I'm going to let the hotel pans uh, catch all the nice juice. So, all right, but just the setup, letting him come up to temp. Hopefully, get him on about 10 o'clock or so tonight. And, um, yeah, maybe finish it up around 3 or so tomorrow, I'm guessing. We'll see. All right. Won't be checking in that much because I am not going to be coming out here. The purpose of having this is so that I don't have to come out. I'm going to go ahead and get this shut so I can start doing this thing. Here we go. We're about to check on this thing for the first time. Hang on. Since I opened the pit and round 9:30. So on the pit, you see no no drop offs in temperature, which means that the pit was not open. The door was not open this entire time. So first time. 
We're gonna see how no wrap is going. It's already up to 146 degrees internally around the flap. Six hours? Yeah, it's gonna be a long cook. <laughs> but it's 3.30 in the morning, we still got plenty of time to go. So let's go out here, check on it, see if I have to spritz it. What do you call apes that share an Amazon account? Prime mates. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look too bad. It smells great. Get my light. Not dry. Bet that's rendering down. Put fat in the basin pot. Okay. Not bad. All right, I'm going to team. Get this shut. Let it go. Check in in a few hours. All right, we're at the 12-hour mark on the brisket, and Butter came out to hang out with me. He gets to hang out and smell the smells. Normally, he doesn't get to do this if I'm cooking for somebody. He has to stay away. But I'm dropping off the ribs. And that brisket is starting to look good. Hold on. Had to grab a glove. See how? And see the key. And lock this thing up so that the kids don't come by and accidentally open it or raccoons come and do something crazy and mess up the cook. Anyway, man, look at that gorgeous brisket. No rat, baby. <laughs> a lot of fat render in here. That's the, the deco and everything. that up there putting this down here and, uh, let's take a look at this move back back you hear that oh yeah nice bark nice bark that's slowly rendering out of this thing I'm praying that it doesn't dry out but you know we're going to still got a little, little fat content up in there it's a chance that we're going to take on this cook we'll see how it turns out pushed in all right let's get him back let's get him cooking I'm doing post oak oh, let me try another piece hmm good profile hasn't gotten too smoky yet I went a little lighter here let me get the shot I went a little lighter on the wood. Went a little lighter than normal on the wood uh, because I knew that I wouldn't be wrapping and I wouldn't be able to shield it from the smoke. Uh, still put a nice amount in there because again, I'm testing and trying things out. But running post oak, normally on really long cooks like this, I, I prefer maple, like really subtle woods, but I didn't have enough maple for today. Um, yeah, it's kind of my go-to maple, but we're coming along. Uh, the brisket was 
at 12 hours in according to the probe it was around uh, just over 160 degrees so i'm not sure how much longer we have i'm guessing it's going to be another five hours or so but uh i don't know we might cut this one after 15 hours because i you know honestly i spent about 60 some bucks on, on that brisket not really trying to waste it <laughs> we'll see done a quick pop in uh it because i upped the temperature to one 246 gradually 225 230 245 just to kind of speed things along and uh after about 160 degrees on here this thing really started taking off and mainly because i have the ribs in here and no moisture in here i want to get a little a little bit of water on that squirt that down a little bit i'm gonna come back i want to check i want to probe this set about 180 right there at the flat give me a second y'all all right so i just probed the flat that's a little juice in there but i didn't like the way that it felt it probed out over 190 and uh it didn't it didn't feel as moist as i would like so i think i might call it done before we make too many uh, uh make a mistake that can't be undone so got some juice up in there oh yes yeah, see it's going through we'll, we'll we'll pull it wrap it let it rest come back with a verdict all right guys Check back later. About 10 o'clock at night. I really didn't want to cut this today. It's a thick piece. That's too thick to really. Hang on. Okay. Began to dry out. Still pretty good. Uh, more of a roast beef type of. Not roast beef, pot roast type of. Consistency. Bark steak. Good flavor. I think I prefer wrapping. Oh well, cool experiment. Get more feedback tomorrow. I was only gonna take a picture, man, but y'all gotta see this. This is outstanding. Look how much fuel I got. <laughs> wow. Whoo, 20 hour cook. 20 hours. 20, count them, 20. And when all of this cools, I'm gonna show you exactly how much it's left. Wow. I love Ohio weather, so I'm out here another day. We're gonna check and see how much fuel we have left after everything cooled down and burned itself off. Hang on. That is a 20 hour cook, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna knock off the ash, see what we have left, and I use that for today's pork belly. This is it. Everything is dusted off, all the ash is dusted and Everything's been stacked back up. This is it after 20 hours. So I cooked the brisket for almost 16, I guess. And then I cooked some other things as well. But the fireboard uh, was on for a minimum of 20 hours, according to the timer on it. Uh, that, so there was fire inside of this chamber for at least 20 hours, 20 plus, because I don't even hook the fireboard up right away. I allow the uh, temperature to come up a little bit on its own before I even hook that stuff up. So that's what I mean when I say 20 hour cook. Fire was in here on these coals for 20 hours and that's what I have left. Pretty impressive.
All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. That's it for the brisket. I was a little overcritical. I, I always am uh, when it comes to the food. I want to strive for perfection every time. And uh, it wasn't my best. It was great. I've had it, you know, in other restaurants. But, you know, it's a little drier than what I would like, what I have done. And uh, so I'm not going to stop chasing that. So when I say, yeah, normally it's still pretty good. And that whole brisket got eaten in about a day, uh, you know, a day span from that day to the next one. So still not, not all, not all bad. All right, guys, great experiment. I loved it. Thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you later.